Okay, this one's for those of you who've got kids who are runners or you're a runner yourself and you're noticing that when they run off, you video them, that their knee is rolling inwards when they swing through and their heel rolls outwards or their foot rolls outwards, so they go into that sort of movement. Also, with kids who are running and they're sprinting and their knee is not getting high enough or their hamstring or the heel is not getting high enough here up to their back of the, of the hip when they swing through. So if you've got a child like that where say one side is worse than the other, maybe both sides are like that, or maybe you're, you're a runner yourself and you notice that where you've got biomechanical problems and I've got two exercises for you. Now of course, you should be doing all the strength work for the deficits of the components there, so maybe it's hip strength or hamstring strength or hip flexor strength. That all should be done, okay? This is, video is not on all that. This is more the neuromuscular programming that you can do. Now, it's especially good for kids because you can combine sort of patterns of movement stuff because they've got to repeat, repeat, repeat to try and get that movement pattern right with the strengthening, with the correction. That's the key because you can do all the exercises like clams and hip flexor loaded work and hamstring work, but then they still let their knee roll in, okay? So you've got to try and give them as drills they do at home, but also warm-up drills you can maybe do before running events to try and get their brain on track to try and correct any movement pattern problems. And it could be weakness, could be hypermobility, could just be coordination. Regardless, these are gonna help you. So, first one I'm gonna go through is using two bands. Now, what you need to do is have two things either side because you're gonna have one band coming from one way, one band coming from the other way. Now, at home it's pretty easy to set up. If you've got a garage or you could tie to something like door handles or something solid, that's not too hard. You just need two bands. I would try and have maybe the heavier band for the knee, so there's a red one, and for the foot, a lighter band, all right? They've gotta be looped like that because you've gotta put them around the legs. So this one is for your knee, and I'll put that one on first. Do you actually try to put the knee one on first? because that's going through your leg. So that one goes through above the knee, okay? Now you'll probably find that you have to get to a point where there's enough tension on it to make a difference. Now this band won't do me too much, okay? But for a kid, that's really good. So with this one, what I need to do, actually I'm just gonna take that off and tighten this up a little bit. You may find that depending on the person, that band needs to be tighter because you might find they have either you know, strong or they're really weak. Sometimes it just needs to be a really light band to give them just a little bit of feedback to help them, okay? So that one there, make sure that loop's big enough for them. That one goes on this leg. This one goes on the foot. Now this is looking pretty technical, right? But you'll be surprised how effective this is. That one goes on the foot. Now what they're gonna do is work on their movement pattern of the swing face, okay? the same phase that they're having problems with the net knee. When they were doing that knee was rolling in and their foot was rolling out, what they do now is if there's a tension's enough on both sides, okay, there's enough foot tension, enough tension here, when they come up into that movement there, this band is challenging them and pulling their knee in, okay, which is sort of, it's trying to make them do the bad stuff, right? This one is trying to pull their foot out. It's trying to make them do the bad stuff. The good thing about this is, if you find there's not enough tension, just wrap it around once for them, okay? Wrap it around twice. What you're trying to do, therefore, is when you, you don't look ahead anymore, you look down at your knee, and when you come up, you've got to make sure that arms are going the right direction too, when the left leg goes up, the right arm goes up, is when this knee comes up, that tension will try and pull that foot out, they've got to correct that. They've also got to try and keep the knee in line this way, okay? And not let this one pull it in, okay? So you can see what those two bands are doing. They're giving feedback to correct that alignment of the hip when they come up into their running phase, okay? So it's just practicing this movement. The good thing about this is they're working on some balance here. Sometimes when they do this sort of thing, it might be the balance of the other leg that's not actually that good that gives them problems as well. So the good thing about this is they can work two birds with one stone, okay? Foot up hand up like that, okay? And trying to get that resistance to help teach you your alignment. They've got to look at it, so you don't need a mirror in front of you. You can, okay? But it's, usually people don't have that home, and for kids they can just look at their foot, look at their heel, okay? And try and work on knowing what they're supposed to be doing, because 
when they're running, they can't really see that, they can't really focus on it, they're just running, okay? So this is the opportunity which you practice to get that right. And of course, swap it around, do it on the other side. Really effective stuff because that will target their sort of programming work. It's like practicing singing a tennis shot, anything like practicing a, a football shot at soccer, okay? It's that neuroprogramming they need to get right so when they're on race day, they're a lot straighter. So that will help. The second thing I want you to work on is the drive to come up to here and get the head up. Now, again, you can work on hip flexor work, you can work on hamstring work. Let's combine the two, because hey, if it's a kid or if it's you and you haven't got much time, combining two at the same time is gonna be great. So this one goes down to the pole. Again, you've got to work on how much sort of tension can you handle. I would probably go double with this one, all right? Because you're after sort of, before that was more, um, affecting movement patterning stuff, so you're just correcting a little bit, this is more strengthening, okay? So if this is my, say my left leg, this one is my problem one, okay? Put that on the toe there, all right? Say I'm, I'm not getting my knee high enough. What I'm gonna try and work on, if I start here, I've got a little bit of tension at the bottom there, all right? I'm gonna come up into hip flexion, all right? I'm also gonna try and go into knee flexion, all right? So I want to think about my heel is gonna come closer to my bum and my knee is gonna come closer to my shoulder. So when I come down in that position, all right, I want to go up into knee flexion, okay? And then slowly down, but I've gotta think, when I do this, as I bring my knee up, I'm bringing my heel in. I'm doing two things at the same time, all right? I'm not just going up with my knee, and I'm not just pulling in with my heel. I need to do two at the same time. And again, they can you know, do this sort of thing where they bring their arm up to help with their brain. But if you look in the mirror, I've got to go knee flexion towards me, heel in at the same time. So when I get to there, I'm really working hard on the hemi. I'm really working hard on the hip flexor. Okay, and they'll feel the fatigue through here and then slowly down. Obviously when it's down there, it's easier. It gets harder and harder and harder as they go up because hey, that's where their weakness is. You know, if they're running and they're only getting, they need to get to here, they're only getting to there, you need to work on at least to here and down, I would go further. So they want to go overcook it, right up into there to get some strengthening, okay? Obviously watch some hip impingement there, but that's the sort of work you need to work on to get that strengthening up into there, okay? Because this one may not be necessary so much a movement pattern thing, it might be more of a strengthening thing, regardless, you're doing both at the same time. And again, it's one of those extra little tools. If you're, if you're in, or you're in the gym, or if you've got your child doing some work, you're working on your hip flexors, you're working on hamstring curls, you're doing all sorts of exercises, and they're still doing the same thing, try and think about the sort of programming the movement with resistance to then get that extra edge and get them doing the things you want to do. Hope that helps your kid. See you next time.